national sovereignty to the European Union since the Euro. Wow. It's very important that people understand this is not about xenophobia, okay? They are trying to import chaos by bringing in right. uh, jihadis, okay? But it is also about a massive transfer and consolidation of political power to the center. Right. And it uh, again, with Obama coming out and saying, you know, isn't it just amazing the things that we can accomplish when all of the countries work together? <laughs> the minute that I saw that coming out of his mouth, it just, for me, I really felt like, wow, okay, here we go. This is the new yes, world order. This is, is everyone. We don't need Congress's approval for this, even though, you know, of course, there's no enforcement power. But that's basically what he was saying, as well as John Kerry came out, echoed it as well. We don't need Congress. Well, Obama's going to try to run this through with the EPA. Mm -hmm. And even though this is just goals, we need to understand that, that UN agendas are very powerful. Our entire war on drugs, which is a huge uh, tax on the economy, a huge drain on us, perverted our legal system, that all came from a UN agenda wow. uh, that was created 10 years before Nixon declared the war on drugs, and they followed it to the T, just like Agenda 21. So this is yet another UN agenda that they're going to push on us, and that's the concern. Well, this is incredible. All right, David Knight, thank you so much for joining sure. us. All right, well, stick around because Michael Cargill, the founder of Central Texas Gunworks, will be in studio. We're going to follow up on that mock mass shooting theatrical performance that took place here in Austin, Texas over the weekend. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're gonna crash, you're gonna feel really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Welcome back. Joining me in studio now is Jakari Jackson with the News Blitz. What's right. going on in the world today? Well, we've got a lot of news going on today, Leanne. Uh, Bergdahl, you know, the story we've been talking right. about for a little while now. Now Bergdahl is to face desertion charges in a general court martial, says Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl, wow. who was held by the Taliban for five years and freed in exchange for five detainees in Guantanamo Bay, will face charges of desertion and misbehavior before the enemy in a general court martial instead of a misdemeanor level form, the Army announced Monday. Now there's a lot of people that have uh, weighed in on this topic. You know, I'm not a military guy, so I, it doesn't really affect me as personally as it does some people, but some, some people saying the guy's a deserter, you know, he uh, put his unit at risk, not only for having them be a man down, but then having to go out and search for him. And right. of course, I don't think anybody was happy that they that they exchanged Traded five uh, detainees yeah, for, for this one guy. Al former Al-Qaeda members who the Obama administration promised everyone they, they're changed men. They're not going to go back to terrorism. Then it turns out uh, one of these guys has emerged as a top Al-Qaeda leader in a video urging Muslims to kill Americans. This is Ibrahim Al-Khosi, and he resurfaced in one of these videos. Um, but, 
you know, these are others. The, the Obama administration also released a uh, bin Laden bodyguard. Mm. And their justification for this is that, you know, we're just going to we're going to release the guys that are less threatening than those that we are fighting presently. <laughs> less threatening. Yes. Well, we what also know, uh, I think it came out last week how they had a guy, guy in Guantanamo Bay for uh, Guantanamo Bay for a number of years who was actually uh, a misidentification. They just got some some wrong guy or they, you know, gave him the trumped up charge and he was there for several years before he got released. Yeah, and, and Obama has said that he wants to clear out Guantanamo Bay because it's basically a perfect recruitment ground for ISIS. So that's why he wants, but I mean, you know, you're torturing these guys for years and they're like, I promise you I'm a changed man. And so he's, been, go he's been saying he's going to shut it down for how many years now? Since, since before he got elected. Since, since before that he got elected. campaign promise. Yeah. So we got some other things going on here. Uh, earlier, you're talking to Michael Cargill about uh, some of the gun rights and, you know, way things are being responded to. But somebody who had a perfect response, not to uh, the thing that happened here at UT, but just guns in general, was uh, Kurt Russell. Mm -hmm. And I know David Knight's been talking about this this last week, but I think it also deserves another mention. Oh, yeah. Because so often we hear uh, many negative things. You know, celebrities, they come out, I hate guns, this and that. And, you know, we see the demand to plan things where these guys make millions of dollars off these violent movies or whatever else. But, you know, Kurt Russell has come out and he said, you know, we need to have guns in this country. And then he gets, he's talking to the guy who's trying to dupe him in, you know, saying something yeah. well, he crazy gets, he's, or he's stupid. He's almost like shocked. Like, well, wait a minute, you're a Hollywood member. Like, he was like, yeah, I mean, he's bad, like, Kurt right? Russell, you have, <laughs> you, you live in a compound where you have, you know, armed security. And you, he was like, no, I, I want to be responsible for my own safety. And as he told the gentleman, Kurt Russell did, he said, hey, you can go to Home Depot and buy, you know, materials to make a bomb. Right. It was on, uh, I think they pulled it off YouTube now, but a couple years ago, a guy made a video going around the airport to airport gift shops and making weapons out of the stuff. Wow. But, you yeah. know, you, you can't talk about well, just common sense stuff like that. Saying. He's like, they can get a knife, they can get a sledgehammer, they can drive a car into you. And I mean, just take a look at what's going on in Israel. They ha mm -hmm. They're having stabbings every single day, multiple stabbings, or people are driving their cars into people using their cars. That happened here in South by Southwest. Uh, I went out there last year. The, the day after it happened, the guy got drunk, drove on the sidewalk, hit, I think 20 people or so, right. uh, several of whom died. Nobody wants to talk about that. Right. You know, it's like, oh, it's an isolated incident. Well, 20 people got hit, many of them died. That's a pretty serious right. incident in Bang my bars. book. So, you know, it's a very good uh, response from Kurt Russell. Now, uh, the Star Wars movie is coming up, Leanne, and I know you're just all the rage for it, but, you know, they have... Uh, this new policy where they're not allowing people at certain theaters to come in, even with lightsabers, you know, because they say they have security concerns and all that. And, you know, I wouldn't support banning, you know, the Han Solo blaster, but to me, that would make more sense than banning a lightsaber. But now we see <laughs> that the LAPD is performing random stop and frisk search searches on people going to the Star Wars premiere uh, in uh, at the Chinese theater out there. And the thing about this is, Leanne, is it's not just people who are going to the film. If you just happen to be in that area walking down the street, you are subject to a stop and frisk. Right. Well, they got to ramp up the terror, the terror threat. So everyone's concerned. You know, you got to decide what side you're you're fighting. If you're for. on the dark side yeah. or not. With because we've been saying this for years uh, because they started doing the uh, pat downs and stuff when you go to the football games and all that stuff. Me and Josh had to go through a TSA style check when we went to the Super Bowl. And we've been saying it's going to extend to shopping malls. It's going to extend to the movie theaters. And here it is, proof positive. Disney World. Yeah, and, and it's not even just, like I said, it's not even just going to the movie theater if you happen to be in that area. The same thing when David Knight and I went to Philadelphia when the Pope was there. They shut down, you know, blocks. You know, we had to walk miles out of our way, you know, to get to our hotel at night. Uh, if you were walking down the street, you had to walk all the way around or you had to be subject to a search. It happened in the United States of America. It's not some <laughs> far off sci-fi deal. It's happening right now but people right. just don't care it's like well you know we'll, we'll put up with this right you know? well speaking of star wars jakari i wanted to go ahead and play this clip from our favorite oh, news yeah. pundit out there uh, guys go ahead and roll the clip of melissa harris perry i spent a whole day talking about the whole darth vader situation but, really? but oh you, you could yeah like the, <laughs> the part where he was totally a black guy whose name basically was james earl jones who, right. and we were all, yeah. and but it, while it, he was black he was terrible and bad and awful and used to cut off white men's hands and didn't you know actually claim his son but as soon as he claims his son and goes over to the good he takes off his mask and he is white oh yes i have many <laughs> many feelings about that but i will try to put them over here now, Jakari, I have been hearing this for several months now leading up to this about Star Wars being racist because they didn't have any black characters originally. And then now it turns out that they do have black characters. So then you have people on the other side going, well, that's like reverse racism or whatever. But 
I have never actually heard this argument. Well, I mean, you know, I, I'm not a huge Star Wars guy. Like, I have seen the movies. I'll see the new one, but I'm not a hardcore Star Wars guy. If you go back to the original tr trilogy, they had who? Billy D played uh, Han Solo's uh, friend or whatever. So they did have black people in it. And then in the new trilogy, uh, one of uh, Princess Leia's mom's bodyguards was black and all that stuff. But, I mean, they have had black people in it. But to say that the movie is racist because uh, Darth Vader was played by, or the voice of Darth Vader was played by James Earl Jones. I've actually seen interviews with James Earl Jones where he talked about it. And he said George Lucas came to him and w wanted a voice that was dark, not dark in color uh, or yes. race or anything. Yeah. He said he was like Loaded a serious, there, yeah, hold on, he, like a serious, uh, intimidating tone. Because you can go back and watch like on uh, special disc DVDs or whatever, making a Star Wars, and you can hear the actual actor who's in the star in the Darth Vader costume. He doesn't sound yeah. intimidating at all. <laughs> so they dub in James Earl Jones to make the guy sound uh, serious and scary. But you know that's just. Uh, I mean, Melissa Harry Ferry says so much stuff that I yeah. Don't well, I mean, these are the kind of things respond to it. These are the kind of things that get traction there because with this whole movement, people want to be able to argue about something. And obviously, Twitter, you have 150 characters, 180 characters to put your point across, so you can't really get into a get in depth to really back up your claims or whatever mm -hmm. you're saying. You can just put out that little soundbite, and you know, then it causes all this. Um, yeah, I, I honestly think they just side. put this stuff out there to get a response from it. I don't think it's something that they're no, really passionate about. She said one way she can think about it all day long. Oh, um, well, maybe she can. I, I, turn I, anything into a racial issue. I mean, this is this is Hollywood where they have, you know, maybe I'm offended that they have, you know, actual humans voicing penguins in cartoons and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I feel offended. This discrimination. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a movie about talking robots and aliens who hit each other with laser swords. You know, I mean, is it really that big of a deal? But here's a story that we should take seriously. Obama to expand modern day slavery with TPP. Now, if you recall, Leanne, if, if you have a trade agreement, you would think that that would be something to put sanctions on things like uh, slave labor, but that is definitely not the case. It was Obama who quietly removed anti-slavery provisions from the TPP in June while he was publicly attacking the Confederate flag as a symbol of slavery. Right. The provision which bars countries that engage in slavery from being part of the major trade deals with the U.S. was written by Senator Bob Men Mendez in the Huffington Post reported in May. At the insistence of the White House, Mendez agreed to modify his language to say that as long as the country was taking concrete steps to reduce human trafficking and forced labor, it could be part of the trade deal. Ah. So you go from this super hardcore stance like, no. It's like the terrorists released from Guantanamo are taking steps to be... Better. Yeah, yeah, we're taking steps to be more humanitarian by, yes. you know, releasing people who we were torturing in prison camps and doing all these other horrific things to. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the people in the prison camps. You know, we see what happens here domestically, uh, surveillance, uh, police brutality, and so on and so forth. Well, this story, I think, could also just make people be a little bit more conscious of where their food co comes from. Because I know a lot of people are concerned, obviously, with uh, GMO labeling. But this is actually, they're telling you that you're... If you get those bags of peeled shrimp or you go to the buffet with the all-you-can-eat shrimp, it's already peeled. Mm -hmm. Who do you think peels that for you? And it turns out these are slave labor uh, companies that are forcing people to work 16 hours a day right. and they are got their fingers in ice cold water. So, yeah, I mean, it might just make you think a little bit about the convenience of the food we have here in the West. Well, Jakari Jackson, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for watching us tonight. We will see you here again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central with our live coverage of the GOP debate. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockout's it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, Valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced.
and it just synergistically puts everything in there. The InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.